Hello everybody, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, and welcome to my review of the LEGO Star Wars Boost Droid Commander set. This set was revealed about a month ago and touted to have a release date of September 1st. However, LEGO gave it a surprise release on June 25th, at least in America. So I went and picked this up at my local LEGO store. It's set number 75253. Its name is Droid Commander and includes 1,177 pieces and is recommended for ages 8 and up. My brother actually built this set and he... Uh, had a real tough time so if you are ages eight and you know around that age you might have a tough time too he's 17 and he just couldn't figure some of the stuff out so, and the final note obviously is that the set does cost 200 dollars, so the price per piece isn't exactly perfect but uh, you do get a lot of uh, cool technology in this set which is the reason that it costs so much anyway the three models included we have a mouse droid a r2d2 and then a gonk droid on the box it shows them all having like the uh, motor transmitter receiver thing However, there is only one included in the set, so I don't like the way that these are presented on the box because it makes it seem like you can actually have all three like that at once. It does say it does include one interchangeable hub, but obviously on the box it's a little bit misleading. It tells you about the free app that you have to download, by the way, to build this set as far as I'm aware because there are no physical instructions included in this set. I was actually kind of disappointed when I opened the box and didn't find any paper instructions. I was like, what's going on here? I had to download the app and look at the instructions and it's this whole weird convoluted thing that you got to try and figure out but the back of the box art shows off kind of the battle bots side of this where you can actually uh, build extensions onto the the models and that's what you actually do with bag 12 and you know another little complaint in this review here uh, because there's no physical instructions i can't figure out where the instructions for these little extra bits that you see here are so as much as I want to show them off later in this review, I might not be able to because I literally cannot find the instructions to build them. Like the app is just, it's a tough one. But speaking of the app, uh, it does kind of give you a quick start guide. Like I said, no uh, typical instruction manual, but you do get a quick start guide. So you'll be able to like kind of figure out what you're doing. Just gives you an idea. Obviously no words, just pictures. But uh, yeah, and then a little advertisement and then everything else is just like battery stuff, battery stuff, battery stuff. So this set costs $200 on its face value, but you also do have to buy batteries. So remember that you need six AAA batteries. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the app. I'm gonna bring it up on my iPad Pro and we're gonna take a look at that. You can download it on your iPhone, your iPad, maybe your iPod, not really sure. If you wanna know if you have a compatible device, you need to go there. So you're gonna have to download the Lego Boost app for Lego Star Wars. It's actually called Lego Boost Star Wars. You literally just download it. It's a semi big file. Uh, it does take a little bit to download. And depending on where you live, your internet speed's gonna be slower or faster, but it's 817 megabytes. So you might wanna clear some space on your device if you don't already have some, but let's let that load up and then we'll take a look at what the app's like. The app has finished downloading after probably four minutes. It did take quite a bit, but here we go. Star Wars Boost, here it comes loading up. Let's make sure we got the volume on here. Yeah. So we'll start up with a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. This is a fresh download, so I should get the full boot uh, sequence through on here, which will be kind of interesting to take a look at. You can see it does take quite a bit to load. Uh, there we go. Now we're into the actual app itself here. Whoa, -ho! hello there. So this does have the Star Wars theme song to it, like the actual one, so I'm not gonna play that out loud because I'll get copyright striked or whatever, and then I won't get money from this video, which should just be sad. Anyway, this is a, kind of an integration with the LEGO Life app as well, so if you have that app, it says you can uh, log in and share your coding projects with your friends through LEGO Life, which seems like a pretty neat integration. Hopefully, we'll see this if they do this with more themes. On the other side, though, is the other like prompt for something to press, and that's just kind of a play button, so we'll press that and see where we go. Turning the volume back on here, you can see we're coming into some planets, Millennium Falcon flying, through the sky. Looks like we're coming into Jakku here. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean. There we go. So there's the full scene here. You kind of get a, a nice view of the landscape. You can see we have Watto flying there. We got Ray in the uh, foreground. Talking about the money of Falcon there, a bunch of parts. You just have to kind of watch these cutscene things. They're a little bit weird, but uh, you'll get the gist, I suppose. R2-D2, Donk Droid, and the Mouse Droid there. UCS uh, Sandcrawler in the background. Just kind of interesting stuff to point out here. But yeah, so it prompts you to click on the Watto figure here. And right now it says to get the parts to repair your starship, you'll need to build some droids for me. But first, do you have the droid move hub? 
if I press no, I wonder what happens, but yeah, we're gonna press yes because we do have it. So we're gonna actually need to turn on microphone permissions because you can actually control some part of this with your voice or with noise. So that's kind of important, Droid not connected. So basically it says press the green button to turn on the move hub. So we're gonna bring over the mouse right here, which does have the thing in here. So having removed the bottom section from the mouse right here, it says press the green button. So we'll press the green button. Basically it turns it on, I think, and it's going to emit some kind of See, press the green button to turn it on. There we go, now it's connecting. You can see there on the, the top of the iPad screen, it's connecting up, so we should be in here in a moment. So we've unlocked Watto Shop. Let's see if there's any cool noise with that one. Nope, same old music. And we're gonna be prompted to click onto Watto Shop there. Man, I wish it would fix that volume knocker roller. But yeah, so Watto show some gold bricks and then it's gonna actually prompt you to scroll on over well, maybe, maybe we have to click Watto. Yeah, click Watto. He's gonna want you to build some things, either the R2D2, the Gonk Droid, or the Mouse Droid. So you can pick from any of these. Um, this app, by the way, is also available on Android and iOS. While I am kind of disappointed with the lack of actual physical building instructions, they've actually kind of done a cool thing here. Um, I kind of wish you got both though. I will say they have integrated a lot of cool stuff. So it kind of gives you a quick tutorial on how to uh, use this new type of mobile building instructions. So that's kind of neat, but you basically can get 360 degree views on everything, which is kind of neat. So press that and then you have a couple of different things here. So it does make noises like when you do stuff. So you might've noticed some noise there. I don't know if my lapel mic picked it up, but you can turn those on or off. It's just like little clicking noises or you know nothing nothing huge um, then you also have these which is basically showing you which bricks you know kind of in a translucent layer you're supposed to be adding next and then this i believe kind of takes this away i'm not sure or maybe that's allows you to click that to some degree this is the one that confuses me the most the other thing that confuses me is they have this slider down here which allows you to see future steps however when you leave it on a step, it doesn't stay there. And as far as I'm aware, there is no way to get it to stay in a place. Like you get it there, you try to lock it into place by doing something. None of that uh, seems to work and you can't do anything. This is the only way to skip steps. That was kind of a cool animation though, opening the bag. But like I said, this, the only way to, uh, to move ahead in the, the instructions is to actually physically press this button. You can't even hold it to skip really fast, which is a shame. So you actually have to press this and that's really annoying. You can't get uh, anywhere super fast. I mean, not that clicking it is super hard, but I mean, that's again is bag one, shows you this animation, build complete and everything, kind of makes it fun and interactive, which is nice and all, but again, there are some downsides to this as well. So we've built basically the uh, necessities out of bag one there and bag two here, we're gonna start on the gonk droid essentially. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and skip through a lot of this because obviously you don't need to see all the instructions again same problem here the slider it works to a degree you can skip ahead and see stuff but as soon as you let go it's gone so you have to physically do this and you can see how painfully slow it can be if you uh, get lost or have to go back a considerable amount because you can't skip back either it just takes you back to where you are so kind of annoying on that front but uh other than that i'm i'm quite happy with this kind of mobile building system and like i said let's uh let me show you guys this uh, you can really take a look at how it's supposed to be as you're building it, as opposed to like a standard Lego instruction where it's just kind of in one spot. So this is an improvement. If they could do this with every Lego set, I would be very, very impressed. But this does seem like it's gonna be something that's gonna be exclusive for this boost set, at least for the foreseeable future. Like I don't think 2020 rolls around and we start seeing this on every Lego set. It would be nice maybe on every set over hundred bucks for like a certain piece count, you know, some type of parameter like that, because I think this is something that has a lot of potential to drive new customers and kind of get people interested in Lego again, perhaps from a technology standpoint. So it's just something interesting that they are doing. Anyway, the first model we're gonna check out is R2D2. So without his third leg in there, it is almost impossible to get him to stand, which is very annoying. I didn't know that was gonna be a thing, but as far as I can tell, unless it was built wrong, um, he doesn't really stand without his third leg on there, which is a shame because obviously you can only have the third leg on him uh, a third of the time uh, when you have two other models in the set. So anyway, uh, he does have some nice printed pieces there for like details on the front side of his torso. You got another print there. I don't think there's any stickers on this set actually. His face looks decent. They did a decent job getting detail on there. And then if we look at the top of his head, they actually have a printed piece on there, which is nice as well. Uh, they kind of printed gray around the blue there, which is very cool. And his head can swivel 360 degrees, pretty low friction. The legs themselves are also very nice designs, very detailed, dark blue and white being the predominant colors there. And then the wheels underneath are very nice 
as well. They used kind of different pieces than I've really ever seen used for wheels on a Lego set, but they work very, very nice low friction, so you can roll him along very easily, or at least when the motors are on him, he will roll very easily. So you'll notice a gaping hole in the back of his torso and bottom there, and basically that is so you can attach the boost motor to this. So what we're gonna do is you have to take the app and you actually have to pick R2D2. All right, so if you get into the instructions here, you gotta pick R2D2 and you're going to click move along. And so if you're removing the, the motor from one of the two uh, builds, you could click one and basically it's gonna show you exactly how to remove it and like the best way to do that. But if you're just, you know, you just kind of have it loosely here, you're gonna wanna pick, build the, the little motor stuff for R2-D2 here. So this is how everything goes for R2-D2. Gotta get it back to step one though. And uh, I gotta put this together correctly for R2. I hope there's another way to do this and I'm just really dumb, but as far as I can tell, you have to just skip all the way back to the middle of the R2-D2 instructions to find the, the section where you put the motors in. This is just beyond frustrating for me right now. Like this is, this is a set that it's almost there, right? There's just a few more optimization things they need to do. Like this is just, this is brutal. Like, all right, I'm about to find out just how easy or difficult it is to actually put the motor section into R2-D2 here. The bigger problem is trying to get the wire to go in without it interfering in the way and then get it to actually fold up into the build, I think. Okay, so I think I've gotten the R2-D2 together. And once you finish a build, what the app will do is it will actually prompt you to connect the droid if it's not connected. So it's gonna ask you to press the green button on the move hub. And the front light will flash. You have 10 seconds to connect the hub after turning it on. So hopefully it will connect on up on its own there. There we go. You can see it's connecting it. r 2 2 is waking up, it says. And now it's asking us to drag the play button to the center there. And that is like the beginning. So I think if we turn on the volume, we'll actually get some clicky noises, which are kind of fun. If we put r 2 2 to the right of that. Come on. There we go. And now I think we're ready. If we press play. Oh, he moved a little bit. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. He's moving. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice. Um, it does say not to put him on a table, but you know, I'm going to do me. So basically with the app, with any of these, uh, these droids, you're going to be able to code them in a way. And I haven't played around with this too much, but we'll just do the tutorial bit here. It's asking us to just kind of drag everything down, I suppose, and press back. Okay. Put this up. So I guess you can do different movements. So this would be like forward one. So whatever that is, that was about a foot, I would say. So that would be forward one. And uh, let's see, we go two. This is for the head movements. There we go. And if we press play on that one, if we, oh, we can wave at it. There we go. So it'll, if we wave at it, it's got the sensor on the right there and it will notice that our hand is here and it'll make a noise. So that's kind of cool. And if we go over to three here, the other thing you can do is auditory. So it's got that sensor on the right there that can see when you wave. And then I think this one is like clapping. So if we uh, clap, he will move his head, which is incredibly cool. Like obviously that's not something you see on a Lego set every day. Programming the set is like kind of the main idea. So once you actually have it together, it's kind of fun, not gonna lie. <laughs> why, why, <laughs> why, 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 why? I just wanna know why. But you have quite a range of movements here, I guess to, uh, so we go forward, back one, then we can do a little turn, then another little turn. So. Let's go ahead and play through that one and see what he does. I don't want him to fall off my table, so I'll be keeping an eye on him. The motor seems to work pretty well. There we go. He turns really well also, and that was a forward rotation. Okay, so I'm impressed as far as the programming goes. I'm sure you can get a lot deeper than I am right now, but on a base level, basically, you just add and subtract stuff. So you can pull stuff from this bottom bar to make it do different things, and you can pull things away. And uh, let's see, we'll do this forward and backwards, and then they'll talk to you. So that is the basics of the app, I suppose. And again, you can get a lot more intricate with it than what I am doing here. 
All right, so I've discovered something new. If you hold it down, you can actually see exactly what each thing does. Like if you hold your finger on it, it'll uh, load up a thing and give you an explanation on it. So that is, you know, start a strip of code when the microphone volume reaches a set level. Let's see, this one will probably be like start a strip of code when you wave at him or something, you know what I mean? So um, different things like that are going to be included, but um, I guess it saves your stuff as well, which is neat. Mind you, this is not all uh, very well explained. Um, you kind of have to figure this out on your own. So let's see, what is this? Where, where, what is this now? We've, we've unlocked a whole nother section of this app that I didn't know existed. R2 D2 is waking up. Oh, okay, so we can now freely control him perhaps. Well, well, I don't like that. I do not like that at all. Can we stop falling over every time? So yeah, you can freely control him, I suppose which is totally gonna mean I'm gonna knock him off my, no, 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 my table. So there's that. What do these buttons do? Oh, okay, maybe we can, uh, okay, we can assign things to the buttons. So, you know, we do green, we go back and we press green, he'll talk to us, right? Anyway, that seems to be like a free control app. I want to know what this other thing is. Unlocked Cantina, oh boy. So maybe this is where we're actually gonna be able to uh, build the custom things because I wanna know how to build those custom things. Okay, so we have a whole nother section here that I didn't know. This is gonna be a long review video, isn't it? All right, let's click on Luke. Mapping Beggar's Canyon. Okay, so this must be one of the mission challenges things that it says there are on the back of the box. So you can do a whole bunch of different challenges and stuff and I assume what you're gonna be able to do with this is basically code your way to uh, run through basically a virtual place kind of in your open world irl um and you're gonna obviously not want to do this on a table because i assume you need much more to so do not move God. why no 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 and there it goes so that's like a small mission thing right there i don't want to really get into that um i might have to do more videos on this actually because I, this is, this review is gonna be way too long if I, you know, don't curb it here and there is a lot to cover with this set. So I do wanna move on to a different character. So let's go ahead and take a look at the mouse droid next. It basically shows you how to remove the item as well from, or all the like mechanic stuff from uh, the R2-D2. And then we can put this back here to make this look a little bit better. But yeah, it tells you how to remove everything from R2-D2 and then you are pretty much set up and they'll put it all back after that. But it'll set you back up to uh, be ready to put it on the next build. So it does have very, very in-depth instructions as to how to do everything. Mouse Droid has a pretty simple design and you can look at it for yourself. Bunch of hatches open up, which we'll get to. I believe the motors can all push that open and stuff. The uh, sides also can open up to a degree. You can see they actually have decent cable management on this one where it kind of tucks underneath onto the side here and you can probably do it better than I did if you take your time, but the cables do bend nicely. You also have this white lever, which is gonna be to activate the mouse droid. So we're gonna do that right now. Yep, there we go. It is now connected. The mouse droid is waking up. Let's put it down so it doesn't, doesn't do anything crazy. But yeah, let me set up a little programming with it and uh, we'll see how well it runs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, let's not go crazy now. This one is gonna move them forward one unit, whatever their arbitrary unit of measurement is. It seems to be about a foot. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure that they don't say. This one is waving, so I think we have to get it in our way. This one might just make a noise or move a flap. We have to press play. You wave at it and he makes a noise. Okay, I see. And then the final one is gonna be the same thing, clapping uh, like we did before, and it's gonna open the side hatch. Let's see, get it like this so you guys get the best view. Press play. That's pretty cool, get that clap activation. I think some people could build some really cool stuff with this, this kind of stuff, but there you go. Those are all three of the things, and this should unlock free play with us. Whoa, 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 whoa. So the mouse droid controls are set up quite differently. You can see even some uh, information at the top here. I'll tell you what each of those, those means, but let's go ahead and see how well we can move it. I think these might be like left or right wheels. Let's, let's try this. Ah! <laughs> so from what I can gather, um, you can once again do the settings thing where you have uh, different buttons. So if you wanna make the mouse droid make noise or whatever, Press, 
Press the green button. If we want to change more, we can add stuff like him opening his flap with the silver button, I guess that is, or white button. So there you go. You can have the different buttons do things, but it's it's a weird control system because you do have two controls right there. So like, I'm not a huge fan of, oh my God. And uh, that's a tough one for me to control. I'm gonna, I am definitely gonna run this off the, the table. Anyway, that's the mouse droid. I think you get the idea. Um, the top hatch, I don't know if the motors actually can open that. I guess it doesn't. I guess it's just so you can kind of see inside. Not really sure, but maybe it's like a BattleBot thing that we obviously haven't gotten to yet, but I don't know if we will in this review because I don't know how to find the instructions for that. So yeah, let's get the gonk droid rolling or walking because he doesn't roll, he doesn't have wheels. So the gonk droid is wired up and ready to go. Uh, this is him in his full glory. He's got this very nice kind of teal design, a little cautionary colors there. You have the sensor hole in the front there with the sensor now in it. You can see that there, nice little details. All throughout this model, you actually pull this top panel off pretty easily if you wanna access the interior there. You can see the motor and the sensor stuff all tucked in there very nicely. This is probably the one that cleans up the nicest as far as uh, hiding everything, other than this one cable uh, traveling throughout the back. Everything else is very, very hard to see, but we are gonna have to open this up if we want to click the green button to activate it. So that's gonna be on, it's gonna connect up, and we are gonna be able to actually walk this thing. Hopefully it doesn't fall over. And there's only one way to find out. The coding process is much of the same on this particular set, like I showed you on R2-D2 and the mouse droid. You can see the twisting thing there. That would be kind of the battle bot thing that I was talking about where you can actually have um, attachments to it with bag 12. And I just can't figure out where the instructions for bag 12 are. I'll show you again here on the box though. Those are the type of arm things you can have like the, you see, you get the idea. But unfortunately, I cannot find the instructions to build those things within this app. So unless I find those, I can't show them to you, which is a real shame because I want to build them because it's part of the set. It's just not intuitive at all where you're supposed to find that. So unless it comes after like I finished doing all this stuff, but I'm just not sure. So we'll do the forward motion. This is gonna be four steps, I suppose. So four, four units should be four steps. No, four steps is four units. So it's just gonna keep going. Maybe not, now it stopped. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and move on to the second thing. It can also do the hand waving thing. So if we do that, it'll go backwards for, walks very slowly backwards. <laughs> And if we move on to step three here, you also have the auditory thing here where you can clap and it will do whatever. Let's see how I get a fresh play. Hey, 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 gonk, 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 gonk. So once you've gone through all uh, three things, you can see they're kind of unlocked within Watto's shop here. So you can pick which one you want to play with, which is very fun. So I'll have to pick the gonk droid here and do his free roam mode here for just a second. I want to see, here's the control panel for it. Pretty straightforward. Should be a lot easier than uh, the mouse droid. It says the gonk droid is waking up. All right, you're awake, let's go. Come on, you need coffee or what? Jesus, it's still waking up. Come on, there we go. Calibration failed. Try again, all right. That is painfully slow. I am holding down the button, by the way. And then you can also give him slight turns so he can, s whoa, that was aggressive. That's an aggressive little step there he's got. There we go. And he just barely doesn't fall over. <laughs> Literally barely, like he might fall over on one of these. It's scary. Um, as far as the gonk droid battle thing goes, I can't quite figure that one out, but the gonk droid works well enough. Can you get an idea of like the leg breakdown there? Very flat legs kind of have a slight angle to them at times so that it uh, does have that extra little bit of mobility it needs to not fall over, but 
As far as the attachments for the gong droid goes, I am probably as confused as you are. All right, it's time to give you my final thoughts on this set, and I have quite a few things to say. It's fun. It really, it, it's fun. It has a ton of potential, especially with the attachments you are supposed to be able to build for the gonk droid. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this review, it is incredibly difficult and unintuitive, and I have no idea where to find instructions for how to build his, like, arms. So, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me why this is not included in the general instructions for the set. It makes no sense to me why there's not maybe like a manual instruction booklet for some of this stuff. Um, the front side of the box is slightly misleading with the uh, showing the sensor things on every build, which is a shame because you would think you're going to get that. However, that's not quite the case because most of the time you're going to be stuck with a mouse droid that has no wheels. You're going to be stuck with an R2-D2 who cannot stand up, which sucks. Like, there's just no way to display that. The Gonk droid may, may be uh, the best without anything inside, so it's really a shame to see what's going on here um, with so much potential. Like this set, uh, for $200, like you should have a third leg that I can put onto R2-D2 to just display him. You should have an extra couple wheels and axles to allow me to roll my mouse droid around without the engine section. It's really mind-boggling, unfortunately, to see exactly what's happened here, and I think R2-D2 uh, sums it up pretty well with this look. I honestly think it's good. I think it has a ton of potential. Uh, you could lose all these extra parts, which is something you have to keep track of. There's just a lot going on with this set, and with the recommended ages of 8 and up, I would say this thing should be like 16 and up. This is like Mindstorms level stuff. I'm 22 and I can barely figure it out. Like, I can't even find the instructions for bag 12. Like, what am I supposed to do? I can't build this. Like, I just, it's, it's such a good set and there's just, it's like a few small things away from being great. And that's what frustrates me the most about this thing is not having a way to display some of the good things in the set when you don't have the engine piece in it. And I'm pretty sure the engine is not sold separately. So you can't just go buy more to, unless you buy them on Bricklink, I guess, but you can't really easily or, or cost effectively buy more to fit into RT2 or your mouse droid. And even then, sometimes you need some of the pieces that are used to attach it. But my rating on this set, I wanted to give it like an eight or nine out of 10. Like, I think it's so good. Like the box art makes it look so good. The app is really good. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit unintuitive, um, but the graphics look nice. Everything is nice. It's all there except for the instructions for that stuff, I guess. I just can't find it. I don't understand. This set just confuses me. Um, that's the best way to put it. I, I really, I don't want to say I don't like the set because I, I like the set. I just, again, like I said a few times, it's just, it's so close, but it's just not there. They, they just left out a few things or made a few things too difficult. Um, and this is made for children. Like I should be able to figure out where the instructions for his arms are and I can't. So, you know, that's a thing. But overall, I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10. I think the app and the whole coding aspect of this are really, really good. Like I think in a couple days after I've played with this a little bit more, I'm gonna appreciate all of that even more than I do now, but I can really recognize that some people are gonna have a blast using that for the coding function. Some kids are gonna learn some real nice stuff as young kids, which is gonna be awesome. I don't know, this is one of the weirder LEGO reviews I've ever had to do. I, I really don't know what to make of this set. It's one of the craziest LEGO Star Wars sets they have ever made. It's something new, it's something fresh, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with and I totally respect, so. Seven out of 10, my final ranking. The app is dope, the builds are dope. It's just a shame that they left out uh, the ability to maybe buy more motors and such. And more importantly, it just, you can't display this stuff. What am I supposed to do with R2-D2? Like, I don't know. $200 though. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments section below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Uh, make up your own mind on this set based on my review because I clearly can't even make up my own mind on this, so good luck. But uh, I, I challenge you to do that. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. That's all I have for today's review, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.